Congrats, Coach. Thank you. Thank you very much. What did you tell the team at halftime? Well, um, let me think back. <laughs> I know from a coaching uh, standpoint, I was really trying to hold back on some things um, into the second half, particularly our uh, pick and roll plays. And the reason for that is I didn't want them to be able to read it and be able to adjust at halftime. It really helped us out a little bit in the second half um, because we were able to get the ball back down to Greg again in the post area and get him rolling to the basket. He started out playing us very physical today and um, just told the players just to keep their heads into the game, don't react to it, but to move with quickness, especially Greg, because a lot of times when guys are playing you physical, if you just walk, it's hard for the referees to actually see whether there's a foul or not. So you really have to change speeds, change, change directions to be able to uh, bring notice to the contact against you. So we did a much better job in the second half of moving without the basketball. Uh, to answer your question though. <laughs> yes, you did. Um, yes. Go on, go on. Your second unit, they fired up the team, they picked up the first five. Well, I think a lot of that goes back to the regular season. I know at the beginning of the year, a lot of people we're a little bit critical of the fact that I kept using my second team for such a long time and the whole purpose of that is just to try to develop them so that they can stand alone, so they can have confidence on their own just in case the starters are in foul trouble or the starters don't play well. At least it's the second team can hold the fort for us while the starters get a rest and that's really been the key to our team. I mean, we don't have anybody averaging over 27 minutes a game. Uh, most of our guys share, share minutes and in the end, at the end of the season, we're still fresh. Our legs are still fresh, and that's one of the keys to us winning. And now you have four straight titles. How do you feel about that? I feel great. I mean, I, you know, this when I first joined at Taneo, I actually inherited the players that were there. Um, the 2008 recruiting class was really the big recruiting class for us. Uh, of course, Chris Chu was already there, and um, Yuri Esqueta and Mike Valdos and those guys, but it was really the class of Ryan Bonafé and Nico Salva, Justin Chua, uh, Frank Goya and Vince Burke who really got us over the hump. Uh, we brought in a lot of big guys that year and com we combined them with the nucleus that we already had and of course at, we already had at that time and of course we've been able to supplement that nucleus with other players the last couple of years that have really led us on this run uh, that we're on right now. So uh, it's just a combination of having good young players and good veterans, guys who have championship experience and who want to win. Uh, that's the most important thing. I mean, these guys really want to win basketball games. They want to be known as the best, uh, the best college program in the country. And we talk about it all the time. I mean, if you're at this level, you have to try to strive for something. And for, for us, it's, we just want to be known as the best college team in the country. That's, that's basically it. Coach, what can you say? You're now Kahane, Nani, Eric, the Los Alios, Baby Talupan, and a sport feet champion. What can you say? Well, I think Baby has more than four, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know, he's yeah. uh, with um, France Lamar in yeah. that group. Um, I think in the end, uh, I'm very confident, but I'm also very humble. So uh, my wife says I'm very yabung, but <laughs> <laughs> most everybody else thinks I'm a humble person. But I'm very confident, and it's a good feeling to be in the same group with those guys. I mean, to be able to not only win one championship, and then maybe falter after that, but to be able to put up a string of championships where you can really convince the same guys, huh? these are the same players I'm coaching, to continue to give their best every year, every game and every year. That's really what it comes down to. I know when I used to play, I earned a lot of money as a player, but I used to take more pride in just everybody respecting the fact that I played my best every time I was on the basketball court, and I was a pretty good player. That's what I always also try to instill in my players. Um, want to be known as being a good player. That's what they should want to be known as. Um, they should want to be known as being a good team. And for me, that's everything. Because people respect you when they see you go out and do the same thing every night without fail. Give the effort every night. The will to win is there every night. People will respect you for that. You mentioned this last year So how does this compare? Well, no, no championship is easy, but definitely last year's championship was much more difficult. Uh, we did not have the talent um, that we have this year, and of course we didn't have Greg Slaughter. I know uh, Ray Ray Parks won the MVP today, but 
for us, Greg is our MVP. Um, he may not have the monster numbers of uh, some of the other players, but he, atta he attracts so much attention that it really makes his teammates better. And I'm happy for Greg because he was able to buy into the system in a very short period of time. Remember, he just joined us last May. And he, he, he um, bought into the system in a very short period of time. And he understood that he was surrounded by good players, and he just had to do his role for him to be successful with this team. And I'm, I'm very proud of him. Coach, you said you want to be the best college team in the country. Mm -hmm. Does this I think we have been the best the last four years. Yeah. Yeah. I imagine, yeah. I think we've won a few PCCL championships. And, uh, but of course, the UAP is probably the top league in the country. So normally, the team coming out of here is probably considered the best in the country. I'm sure San Sebastian might have something to say about that. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Coach, every game you always mention that you're you're not talking about the finals, out of the fourth bit, but looking back, did you sense it that you have the chance to win it? Well, I don't think it was just me. There were a lot of people who were saying um, if we could win last year, then we probably had a chance of winning this year because Greg and Kiefer were coming in. Um, I remember all of you saying it, most of you at least. Uh, so for me, I'm, I'm happy for my coaching staff. They work very, very hard. They support me a great deal. And luckily, we're very close as a coaching staff, which is rare to find in this business. And they work very hard, and, and the players really respect us and they execute for us, which is the most important thing. But you know, the bottom line is we've done a good job of recruiting. We recruit good players every year. Uh, we have some handicaps as far as who we can recruit because of the academic standards at Ateneo. But at the same time, we are able to recruit good players who want to study, which is very important for us. So as long as we can continue to recruit good players, I think the program will continue to be strong. Uh, that's really the key. I mean, I consider myself a pretty good coach, and I think I have a very good coaching staff, but without good players, we probably would not be very successful. Coach, can you talk about your particular performance this year? Well, if you notice over the last four years, I mean, there's times when Nico really takes a lot of shots or, you know, he misses the open man sometimes, but he has a, a knack for being able to just surrender to the moment when it's crucial, when it's championship time. I think he just won his MVP in the PCCL too, didn't he, last year? Mm -hmm. And he played very well in this past Phil Oil tournament that just passed, particularly at the end. Mm -hmm. And he has a tendency of just being able to deliver when, when it's most crucial. And that's going to serve him well as he continues in his basketball career because he's going to be known as being a winner and a guy who really will, is, is willing to sacrifice um, at this time of year, at the end game. Uh, you have to understand with my team, and I'm, I'm not being very, I'm not going to be critical or anything like that, but I probably could play my players 35, 36 minutes and <laughs> let them take all the shots and win an MVP. But that's not the, what we stand for, you know. And Nico Salva has bought into the fact that, yes, he's a very talented player. He probably could be averaging 20 points a game on any other team. But on our team, we're a team. We're, we, we play as a team. We share the basketball. <laughs> Some nights may be his night, other nights may go to somebody else, Keith Ravenna or Emma Mumford or Kurt Long or, or or Greg Slaughter. So, I mean, he's part of that 2008 recruiting class I was talking about. And hopefully, hopefully we'll get Ryan back next year so we can continue to win. I think that's why I wore this. Mm. What, what are you going to miss the most um, with the, the parts around Kurt, Bax, and Emma? Very good defensive players. I mean, that's really, as a player, that's, that's what I really focused on. Even though I could score the basketball, I really focused on being a good defensive player. And, you know, those three have actually really bought into the fact that we are a defensive team. We live and die by our defense. And, you know, I was asked the question, I think, after game one, why were we able to control the guards of uh, FEU in game one? And I don't think it's anything new. I mean, these... My guards have been pretty good defensive players for the last four or five years now, and they come out and play defense every every game. I'm really happy for all of them. I remember when I recruited them. Uh, Fox probably was the one who had the most notoriety because I think he was MVP in the juniors in the UAP when he came in. But I remember with Emin Mumford, um, we played in the university games in Bacolod and Celi, um, and he took a boat from Elo Elo to Bacolod to try out for the team. And we saw him for about 30 minutes, and we said yes, despite the fact he was so small. He was like a 12-year-old at that time. <laughs> and he's grown. I mean, I even put him back on Team B one year. But he has grown over the years, and he's become our court leader. 
Uh, he leads the league in steals, he leads the league in assists, he leads the league in, in free throw shooting. Um, he's really become a very good player. Kurt is by far our best defender. I mean, there's no question about that. If you guys have a defensive player of the year, I'm, I'm doing a little PR for Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't really see it in the numbers. You're not going to see the uh, block shots or the steals, but individually, defensively, he's a very good player. And he can score the basketball. Actually, when I recruited him from Faith Academy, he was a scorer. He wasn't a defender, but he's been willing to sacrifice and do whatever the team needs. So um, I'm going to miss those guys a great deal. In five years with him. Do you think you 